The Oscars were held last night, and we saw hundreds of stars descend onto the sleepy hillside town of Hollywood, California. To celebrate, here's my first ever yearly rundown of my favorite feel-good moments you might have missed, told too fast. Nominees Meryl Streep, Margot Robbie, Saoirse Ronan, and Sally Hawkins were said to be sisterhood at its finest. After a candid moment was captured of them embracing each other backstage during Frances McDormand's pro-female speech. I told you this would be fast. Jordan Peele became the first black screenwriter to win Best Original screenplay. Jennifer Lawrence made fun of her mate Emma Stone for last year's La La Land mix-up. Director Guillermo del Toro had to grab the envelope to double-check he really won Best Film for The Shape of Water. Ex-Hollyoaks actress Rachel Shenton won her first statuette for The Silent Child, a movie about the struggles of growing up deaf, and she even delivered her speech in sign language. How good is that? The Black Mamba won an Academy Award, and last but certainly not least, Oscar Isaac gave BB-8 a little belly rub. And breathe. Gaz Beadle has gotten a new tattoo to celebrate the birth of his son. It's an image of a father lion standing over his cub. Oh wow, what a piece of art. It reminds me of that Disney film, The Lion King 2, Simba's Pride. Gaz took to Insta to unveil the tat to his three and a half million followers. He captioned the pic, I will always protect you. Oh, that's so on the nose. Gary and his GF, Emma McVeigh, welcomed their first child, Chester Raymond, together in January. I'm teasing, but it's honestly fantastic to see a father supporting his newborn son like this, and it's pretty unique. Plus, it's good for the environment. Think of the trees we'd all save if everyone used their body as a diary. Marking down major life events, like Gaz Beadle did on his bicep on this story I'm doing. Kylie Jenner just shared a glimpse of Baby Stormy's nursery and here's everything we know. It's pink! Obs. Yeah, that's it. Sorry for the clickbait. Kylie posted a pic of a light pink heart with multicolored butterflies hanging on Stormy's wall on Snapchat saying, I love her room. And to be fair, it does look cute and great. Now we're all feeling broody. It's been a month since Kylie and Travis welcomed Baby Stormy into the world and the guys just celebrated with their first mummy and daddy date. But unlike normal parents who probably hit Ikea, have an argument, inhale meatballs, and then head back to put up a cot. Kylie and Travis left their one month old at home to join friends for brunch at Sea Spice Miami and actually arrived by boat. Oh, not, not the helicopter today, just the boat. RuPaul's issued a big apology to the trans community on Twitter after making controversial comments about trans people. It's never too late to apologize. Ru was chatting to The Guardian when he said he would probably not allow a transgender woman who had undergone gender confirmation surgery to compete on his show, RuPaul's Drag Race. Ru said, you can identify as a woman and say you're transitioning, but it changes once you start changing your body. It takes on a different thing. It changes the whole concept of what we're doing. And after a back clash from queens on the show and the LGBTQ plus community, Rue tweeted a comparison about transgender drag performers being similar to athletes taking performance enhancing drugs in the Olympics. But as many of us know, hormone correction is nothing like athletes using illegal drugs. And Rue has now apologized on Twitter saying, I understand and regret the hurt I have caused. The trans community are heroes of our shared LGBTQ movement. You are my teachers. And I think it shows us that no matter who we are or in Rue's case how much we've done for the community we're all still learning and in a way that's kind of beautiful. Shante, you stay. Michael B. Jordan is often seen as a heartthrob but in new Marvel movie Black Panther he set pulses racing literally. Fan Sophia Robb's experience after watching the movie has gone viral because clearly looking at Michael with no top on was too much to handle. So much so she actually broke her retainer from all that clenching. It all started with a simple Tumblr post created by Sophia's orthodontist. The post, which was screen grabbed and posted on Twitter, details an emergency orthodontist visit made by the teen after watching Black Panther. After thousands of people have shared, liked and retweeted the post. Sophia herself stumbled upon the picture and tweeted, wait, that girl is me. That is my orthodontist Tumblr. This is a post about me. Yes, my dear. It is. She went on to share a photo of him writing, this is literally my orthodontist and he's the chillest person I've ever met even though he exposed me on the internet. Since the post has gone viral, Sophia has been hailed as today's internet winner and some people on social media claim that it was the funniest thing they've ever seen. Users on Twitter even started tagging Michael in the post, asking him to respond and of course the Twitter gods answered their call as he responded, since I feel partly responsible for breaking your retainers, let me know if I can replace them. Somewhere right now Sophia is losing her 
Ed Sheeran has revealed why he's already wearing a wedding ring, even though he's not married yet. At the start of the year, the Shape of You crooner revealed that he got engaged to girlfriend Cherry Seaborn before Christmas, and of course, we had no idea about this. It seems as though Ed is up to his old tricks again, as we already assume the pair got married in secret, as the singer's been wandering around with a shiny new band on his wedding finger. Speaking to an Australian radio host, Ed admitted, we didn't get secretly married, no. She made me this ring out of silver clay, so we were both kind of wearing rings. It also means that nobody will know when we have got married. Ah, oh, sly Ed. Very sly. It seems as though Ed could have his pending nuptials at home, as it's revealed he submitted plans to build a chapel at his Suffolk estate. Look at him just trying to keep us away from the big day. Cheeky. If we find a way in, we'll be sure to let you know. Kim Kardashian West makes another attempt to break the internet. On a recent trip to Japan, Kim decided to get into the spirit of things and take in the culture. No guys, no. Not by wearing a kimono or drinking sake, but by posing with freshly dyed pink hair, eating ramen noodles with, um, no top on, because that's very normal. The star wanted all of our attention, and quite frankly, she's got it. Of course, the Kim stands were out in full force, commenting, iconic noodle queen, and the only person who can make slurping soup look sexy. We are totally looking at the strands of ramen hanging from her fork, and nothing else. Promise. Although Kim seems to like all the attention, Sister Chloe doesn't quite feel the same. The expectant mother, who is only a few weeks away from her due date, said that she'll shield her daughter from their hit reality show, Keeping Up With The Kardashians. On her app, the star made a list of do's and don'ts when raising her child. She revealed there'll be lots of family time with cousins Stormy and Chicago, but unfortunately the little one won't be able to watch the family show until she's at least 13. Yeah, it's probably not a good idea to hear your mum speak about having sex whilst pregnant with you or watching her dry hump a stuffed giraffe. We just can't wait to see a glimpse of Baby Thompson. It's International Women's Day, a day to celebrate the immeasurable achievements of women. But while progress is hard and it often feels like we're running the wrong direction up an escalator, if there's anyone strong enough to overcome years of systematic sexism, it's the millions of phenomenal women around the world. So today we're talking to a few of them about how we can all keep pushing for progress for every woman everywhere, not just the privileged ones. In the past year, we've had the Time's Up and Me Too movement, which have seen phenomenal displays of bravery and solidarity from women in the spotlight and out of it. But it's also a harsh reminder of how much women have to deal with. We caught up with Jennifer Lawrence to find out if things are changing and what really needs to happen in Hollywood to achieve real pay parity. I think that, you know, with conversation comes change because you feel more entitled to speak up. I think that one of the biggest problems that I was facing around 2015, I think I'm trying to think when I wrote an essay about pay gap was just because I didn't feel comfortable addressing it really because I didn't want to sound like a brat, I didn't want to sound like a diva, I didn't want to sound like all of these things, that the, all of these words that we have for women but we don't have for men. But now it's an okay thing to talk about and you know with more opportunity is going to come more more equity. So if women and, and people of color have more options on movies, um, as many as a white man, then they have more freedom to walk away, therefore they have a stronger negotiating power. So opportunity equals equity. The problem with gender inequality is that it manifests in so many ways that sometimes it's hard to see the inequalities that exist outside of your own direct experience. But it being International Women's Day, it's crucial to remember that most barriers faced by women are even tougher for women of colour, transgender women, those in more oppressed communities, and basically any woman that isn't a straight, white, cisgender female. We talked to Gaudem's Liv Little and Charlie Brinkhurst Cuff about why intersectional feminism and International Women's Day are so important. I think International Women's Day is a really important time for us to sort of recognise the amazing work that is going on throughout the whole year yeah. um, when it comes to women. And I think it's also a time where, if we can, we should be, again, recognising the most marginalised women. They're the people that I'm going to be paying attention to this, this International Women's Day. Periods. They're bad enough with the crippling pain and the PMS that makes you feel like you'll never know happiness again. But with Plan International reporting that 1 in 10 girls in the UK can't afford tampons, period poverty is clearly sexism at work. And the UK government are doing nothing about it. Amica George and Grace Campbell want to change this and are calling on Theresa May to provide free sanitary products to all children on free school meals. Here they are with more on why we need to talk about period poverty and how they want to see things change. I think period poverty is definitely directly linked to feminism because if men had periods, 
this wouldn't be an issue. Government is so dominated by men. It's like 30% female, 70% male. Men don't empathise with periods, they aren't aware of periods. It's kind of this big taboo that nobody talks about. So if women were in power, I don't think this would be an issue in the same way that it is. It's directly linked to gender issues and gender equality. Madeleine Petch speaks up on whether or not she thinks Cheryl Blossom is a witch. Oh, that noise even took me by surprise. I mean, we all know exactly how Riverdale Cheryl is going to behave in a given situation, unpredictably. But there could be good reason, according to Madeleine, as she thinks she might be a witch. <laughs> I should have seen it coming that time, that's on me. It kind of makes sense, I guess. It would explain her erratic behaviour and her house. Here's what she had to say about the River Vixen's possible supernatural abilities. If you guys recall, in the first episode of season two, I kissed Fred on the forehead and all of a sudden his eyes open like two scenes later. That's always made me question Cheryl's abilities. What do you guys think? Could this explain some of her outbursts? <laughs> that was way too late, like a sentence late. Former EastEnders star Sid Owen was reportedly kicked off his flight after an altercation with another passenger. Ricky! Just let me get through this, please. Here's what supposedly happened. Former EastEnders star Sid Owen is sat on the runway on a flight to Dubai. The geezer in front of him kept reclining his seat. This made former EastEnders star Sid Owen upset, so he asked him to stop. Somehow, this escalates so much that the geezer ends up allegedly assaulting former EastEnders star Sid Owen, slapping him right across the face. Here's what one eyewitness said. We were at the gate when he came storming up the aisle, shouting at a male steward. Someone's just slapped me. He was extremely red, gesticulating and agitated. Apparently, the guy in front of him had reclined his seat and Sid had objected. Then it turned into handbags. Sorry for our world viewers. Handbags, in this context, is a word nobody uses. The two gents were asked to move, but both refused. This led to both parties being escorted off the plane after delaying it for an hour. Phew, that's all folks, a true tale for the ages. And to add insult to injury, former EastEnders star Sid Owen left the cabin to shouts of... Critical! That.